grace worship there's a grace there's grace to worship his name amen praise the lord shalom some people don't know how to answer that shalom amen i'm getting more shalom yeah so we thank god for another evening it is refreshing to be found in his presence it is a uh, uh, is how do I call it? It there's a way you are refreshed. There's a way you are empowered. You have kept me long on this pulpit. Now I am going to walk around in Jesus' name. So you people you have to behave yourself. We have given you enough rest. Now there is no more rest. Uh, we are talking about uh, sound mind. Amen. We have talked about the word of God, the spirit of the sound mind. I want to continue in that. I want to continue in that because uh, I'm finishing today. We say soundness of mind is about uh, is about uh, uh, adapting the thoughts of God and making it yours. I think in a summary, that's all what I can say. You are adapting the thoughts of God. Or how do I put it? It's like you, you own the thoughts of God and then you make it yours. When we are beginning, we were saying that uh, when we are beginning, we were saying that uh, in the book of Isaiah 55 verse 8, we, we read and we realized that the Bible of God was saying that uh, uh, your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my. The book of Psalms, the Bible also talks about uh, Uh, this man is called who? Moses. The Bible says Moses knew the ways of God. But the Israelites, what did they know? The acts, the works. In other words, they saw what God did, the Israelites. But Moses had ability to cause things happen. Hmm? He, he, he caused the ways of God or the works of God to happen now when we are talking about sound mind having a sound mind we are talking about reaching a level where you can think like God and make what God can cause to happen amen are we together now I'm saying you are reaching a point where You adapt the thoughts of God. You own it and you personalize it. You make it yours. So that you begin thinking the way God thinks. You begin speaking the way God speaks. I think by now we have realized that everything about us, be it the work we do, bit our behaviors, our characters, our destinies, all of these are products of our words. All of these are products of our words. And maybe I can add this one also. All these things can also be a product of what we have been investing in our system. So when we take in the word of God and we make it rich in us, we begin thinking the way God thinks and he does what God can do. It is not, it will not become now a struggle to live the way the word of God is asking us to, to live. 
Like many people know, they are full in the church. But they are finding it very hard to be, become believers. <laughs> How do I put it? The, to, to believe even what is written in the scriptures. Even to believe what the Bible says. Many believers are finding it very hard. When you have a sound mind, you have reached a level where you don't struggle to do what God says. You don't struggle to think the way God thinks. The thoughts of God are not strange to you. You have reached a point where it's like you have, you have been removed out of carnality. And you will not be telling us it is hard to do what the Bible says. It is hard to give. <laughs> it is hard to pray. You know, how many people say that? So many. It is hard to love your neighbor. You know, <laughs> it is hard. <laughs> is it hard? In fact, it is hard for many people to love. You to talk about love one another. The Bible reads. The Bible says. You find people when they talk about the word of God and they believe that they've been in the church for so many years. They hardly come to terms with what the word of God says. In fact, they choose their own ways. You are in the church. You are called a believer, born again person. But the life you live is outside what the word of God says. God is still a stranger to you. After you have been in church for years. After you've been... Because we have not intentionally adapted the thoughts of God and made it ours. So when you intentionally choose to saturate your mind with the word of God, until all your thinking, uh, at some point this becomes very hard to some of us. Because sometimes you'll realize that you have to make some decisions that are a bit hard. Or let me put it this way. Not that the, some of these decisions are not hard, but they are strange. It's very strange. It's very strange for somebody to bring one million to a church. Even if you have ten million. Very strange, yeah? Very strange. I am looking for a time, and it's not far from now, where one person can purchase a land for the church. We don't need fundraising. Amen. There's no amen. amen. One person buying a lorry for the church or bus. One. 15 million. Pop. And he doesn't feel it. <laughs> because the kind of believers we have in the church today, they still feel like whatever is in the whatever they have is theirs. It's not God's. And how will God bless us? Hmm? How will he bless us? I was listening to Faneros today. If you know who Faneros is, that, or the, those ministry, the, that preacher. The man was saying uh, it was his church. How to help people who, over the COVID period, there are some people who are not really uh, enjoying life. Things were hard on them. And he's telling people, even if you have only one kg unga that has remained, that's the only thing you have ahead and behind you. you that is what is, they say between me and poverty. I don't know. I don't know. Those are some of the languages people use, although that's not my language. But <laughs> Even if you only have one kg of unga in the whole house and now you have nothing yet, he says, take it, go and give it to somebody who does not have. And you know that's the only one you have. He says, that giving will make will bring you out of struggles of getting food. It has to take faith for you to believe that. I mean, it has to take faith. So I give, I, and this is the only thing I have. It is a strange kind of reasoning. Why? Why do you apply such principles to seed? In fact, when you go and buy seed to plant, that is the only seed you have. Is that true? That's the only seed you have. Because if you go on to buy, you, you buy one kg seed or two, three kg, and you, you, can, you can plant it all. 
<laughs> why, why can't you apply the same to other areas of life? The only thing you have, if you are told give, it is very unsound for a believer who is not who is not fixed in the word of God to people who don't know God. But this kind of reasoning has to become natural to us. If you are not giving more, you must know that your tomorrow is wanting, it's lacking something. What you do today is what makes your tomorrow better. Amen. So what we are trying to say is that uh, when you reach a point where you cannot doubt God on anything he says, and you can move fast to do what he tells you, you are sound in your mind. You are very sound. When you can make decisions in line with what the word of God says, without thinking twice. You know, sometimes they tell you think twice. So if I do this, what happens next? You begin thinking. You're thinking. Even if you want to think twice, thrice or how many times? Four times, <laughs> five times. If it is human thinking, it cannot take you anywhere. <laughs> it will put you in a place that you will never be advantaged. Every time your decision is on the word of God, you will never be ashamed. One of the biggest challenges, you fear what happens. We act on the word of God. Amen. We don't fear. We don't fear. We act on the word of God by faith. In fact, the best way to kill fear is to do what the Bible says. That's the best way. Because you are acting by faith. Boldly. Huh? I am doing it. The first time I gave the man of God 80,000. You know, every month we must sell. We must seed out. We must give seed. And that's the best place to give some seed. 80,000 as he was going back. He was so happy. I mean, hey. Amen. He, has he done much? Does he qualify that? Just too much money. That is not tickets. The, the air ticket is not there. The air ticket was taken care of Mapema. I finished that all of it. Let him go home and celebrate. Now, such a honor. I, I learned something from a pastor from Bishop Ayodepo. He, he says I, he gives one million naira. You know, somebody just preached two days. <laughs> There's a time Miles Monroe came and preached in his place. He gave him one million naira for speaking how many days? For well, us, we feel like does what he did measure to the amount I'm giving him economists thank God there's nothing like economists in the, in the church in, in the kingdom of God economists are always aware of scarcity you know the resources are not but the resources are scarce so you have to think soberly that is unsound thinking Hey, let's think soberly. And then we do this. Especially when a man of God, you know, there are people who are called. The best place to plant seed is when you see something happening when a man of God stands up. Like that man. If he says something, he has said it. This Sunday, we need to confirm. Those pastors who came here on Sunday, we need to confirm their offering this Sunday. Because strange man is coming to that bucket. Is strange money, including ours. I think we are part of that. Or he talked about others who came here. It is hmm? you have you need faith. You need faith to believe that. <laughs> Such a man of God. Ah. You know, my God. So if you see my vehicle, I know you'll believe him more than ever before. Because the first time he stood here, after five minutes of preaching, the first day he came, he 
It's a God has commanded somebody to bring you a vehicle. You will see it. That day I know you will send more seeds. <laughs> Let mine also be released. <laughs> you also have a vehicle. Can you imagine he also, when he just looked at her the first time, he says, you have a white, a white one is coming. Mine has not given me the color. I have to decide which one it should be. Eh? Why are some people getting vehicle and others are not? Why did they pray it? Some are still persevering on motorbike. Amen. <laughs> And the day that, <laughs> why should non believers drive so many vehicles around? And you look, you are saying you believe in God. No, we need to have better things in Jesus' name. The Bible lets us know that God's mind is available for us to have. As we read in Philippians 2 5, the Bible says, Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. The mind is. You will not want to forget what the word of God, which is the expression of his mind, is a spirit and the very life that sustains all things. And the word of God is the expression of his power. You cannot afford to forget what the Bible says. I'm saying you cannot. You cannot afford to forget. I mean you cannot. As the Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 22, be doers of the word, not hear us only. Deceiving yourself. In other words, when you forget the word of God and you begin acting outside his word, God is not on your side. I can say that one boldly. Every time you're doing outside his word, he's not there. Even if you're born again. And you're a child of God. I know you're a child of God, yes. Ata mzazi wako wakijua umeanza kufanya makosa, ata kusupport. Eh? Si mimi nilikwambia. Hmm? <laughs> Why do you want to think that God is different? So forgetting the word of God is the worst thing human beings can do. Is the worst. And the Bible says it's just like somebody who looks himself in a mirror and he forgets what he looks like. Kama kulikuwa na matope surazima, uliangalia ukasau. Utatembea tu kabo kijaibisha tu dunia zima, sidiwa. You just be. You see, it's, it's dangerous not to know yourself as a believer. We've been taught. What we've been taught in marvelous believer, the whole teachings, please download. I'm repeating, please. Every teaching, at least listen to it seven times. By the time you finish listening to all, kuna zingine utaanza kusikiza na unashangaa kama ulikuwa kwa hiyo. Already zimezao. Na kuna zingine utasao. Utashangaa kama uli. The more you hear and hear and hear and hear and hear. Now, those words that is in spite of the spirit that the man of God has given us concerning us. It will determine how we respond whenever anything happens. I began listening to Theo Losborn after I heard him talk about Theo Losborn. I said I was listening to Theo Losborn. I was so surprised. Theo Losborn says, when so many suffering people are all over around you, sick, lame, blind, then he says, he was reading some book, a book by Kenyon. E.W. Kenyon, for some of you, might be that man can be new. He says there's a book that that man wrote. The book say, uh, the title of the book is Practice the Presence of, of God. He says when you see all these sick people around you, then you know that he is inside you. And you can make all of them to be whole. <laughs> that's key. That's, that's who? Kill us an evangelist that our friend found him nearly early 70s he was telling me the other day huh? early 70s in Nyeri he was preaching there Osborne. 1956 he was in Mombasa he's been 
In fact, he preached in, in, in Kenya more than elsewhere. I don't know how Robert Kayanda caught that anointing. And he became the, the, he became the, uh, the spiritual father of Robert Kayanda. I don't know, in Kenya, nobody saw him. I, my God. You know, this kind of man of God that came the other day. Some of them are still feeling that these are just ordinary. No, no, they're not ordinary people. <laughs> if you can catch what is on them, you can be like them. Within very few years. Very? Very few years. The presence. He says, if all these suffering people are gathered, he fills this, the stadium wherever he goes and he preaches. Let's see if it was born. But he says, if I see all this and I know that he is in me, then I just tell them. That's why sometimes he, when you listen to him, you listen to him, you'll get what I'm talking about. He looks at the people in the wheelchair. He says the legs were designed to walk. And the man just walking out. He's not touching them. Hmm? The eyes were designed to see. The blinds are seeing. The day for what? The ears. You have been given that ear to hear. He's just talking. Just by being aware that God is in him. That's why whenever Ben Isaac teaches, he says the greatest concept in this life is God is inside you. And as long as he's inside you, you can do anything. Amen. So we are saying we should not forget the word of the word of God in any way. If there's something that we should not forget, like for example, by his stripes you are, you should not forget that. And you have, it has to become a point. Uh, to, it just will come to a point where you are so convinced. That sickness cannot enter your body. Or even if it enters, it has to leave. You don't need to bargain with sickness and disease. How much it should pain you. Or how much you should give. How much it should disturb you within the day. Hmm? I'm talking about sickness and disease. So convinced that you will not interfere with me. I, I think we need to raise such believers. Who are so determined and so angry? Have you ever been so angry by understanding some truth? Until that thing happened? Sometimes we need to get angry to the devil. So we are saying the spirit of the sound mind, the word of God is the expression of God's mind. As you listen here and understand what it is saying. It has to become your reasoning or your thinking. The word of God. You will become as God himself in this life. Where nothing becomes impossible to you. Not to God. God knows nothing is impossible to him. But he wants you to come to a point where nothing is impossible to who? To you. That if you want to do anything, it's possible. You can do it. Who being the brightness of his image, of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, and sat down on the right hand of the Father, majesty on high, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Amen. His power is represented by his word. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Look at that. What you don't have is because you, are not, you don't have the perspective of God. That's why you don't have. You're not thinking the way God thinks. You don't see things the way God sees. You're thinking humanly. As long as you think humanly, you cannot get what you want. So for you to have all that you need in this life, 
you have to very fast change the way you think so that it be the way God thinks so that you don't need to ask for it you naturally have it if you abide in my word and my words abide in you you can ask for whatever you want and you shall have it many a times when we pray to God one of the things that he looks at is our motive what is the motive behind what you you want Are you purely thinking about how to lift his name above every name? Is what you have for the glory of God or is about you? One of the things that God will have to fight hard in your life or in any human, any person's life is selfishness. Where you only want to live for yourself. Where you only want to have everything for yourself. It's not about you. It's just about you and you and you and you. You're not thinking about others. Whenever God begins taking charge of your life, you mind more about others than yourself. Even the small money you have, you think of how to share. I'm saying the small. Because it begins from that smallness. And as you begin sharing, more comes. If you know that you are, you are thinking more about others. And you want to know. As long as everything you have is you and you. You, yourself and. Me, me myself and I. How do you put it? Me. Myself and I. How do you put it? Now as, assume somebody is talking about you. Or about me. Me, myself and I. You, yourself and. So that you don't think about others around here. Hmm? Even when you're eating, that money is yours, not for anybody else. Even if you see a beggar on the road, you just pass by. <laughs> Will he come down from heaven to help? No, we will not. So, when you reach that level where you are always thinking the way God thinks, it is easier for you to have what God has for you. How then can you be ever oppressed if God has given you his word? That what, whatever you want, if you only let his word dwell in you, you shall have whatever you will. My friend, find the word of God and let him feel your thoughts mightily and you will experience abundant life you see now you have to deliberately go for the word of God you have just to be deliberate and that's why I pity people who go to church once per week I know they will tell me they will be listening to radio to TV it is not as impactful as this kind of meeting where you come. And even that one has to be intentional. You have to know that you cannot operate well without the word of God. You will malfunction if the word is not heavily in you. In fact, all the thinking you have is funny to God. All the way you think is just funny. <laughs> God is looking at a funny figure moving around with funny thoughts <laughs> and wondering why things are not working. You know, the worst thing is, I look at the church today, I'm just surprised. How people think that it is God who decided. What did God decide? Are you in any way doing what he said? Amen. You will only enjoy life to the point, to the level you've understood the word of God. Hmm? Even the life we live, we live to the level of our knowledge. A poor is living to the best of his understanding, being poor. All that he has is that small money. Hmm? 
A rich person is also having as much money as he could, depending on how much he understands. A very successful preacher in the world is enjoying life to the best of his understanding. And a very miserable preacher also is somewhere <laughs> is somewhere Huh? What do you call it? Is he enjoying life? How do you enduring all the things that are coming on earth and telling God like one of them was saying, That is his level of understanding. Until the word of God comes and deliver him from that. So you see, you might need to have more than what you are putting in yourself today. The word of Amen. We are going to a point where we are going to preach three times a day. In the morning, lunch hour, and in the evening. Lunch hour has begun today. We are, we are just trying to exercise our muscles briefly. But we reach a point where now there will be teaching also in the afternoon. I think it's a good way to prepare for the coming of Jesus. This busyness in the church. Not outside. Many ignorant ministers of the gospel relate messages that communicate fear. They never pause to study Jesus in the Bible. Or, and many through their word often imply that believers will come into judgment. Yet Jesus said, if you hear his word and believe on him who sent him, then you will not come into judgment. But instead, you have bypassed death and you have eternal life. You have come into life. The main reason they will not say what Jesus said is because they have no room in their hearts to believe exactly what Jesus said. But you can. Have you listened to preachers and the only thing that happens to you is fear? They intimidate you by all means. Hmm? They create fear. Hmm? How? There's a way sometimes they speak to you until you feel you're the most the, the most terrible sinner in the whole world. There's some question they ask. I remember those days when you were in those churches. Ukikuja tu kuna zile maswali unaulizwa. Unaishi tu kufikiria wewe umetoka kwa dhambi tu sasa hizi. It's like you just came from sinning. <laughs> and you're like, hmm? Somebody can ask you. How sure are you that you are qualified for the coming of Jesus? Mungu tuwa tusaidia. Ito kito kelezea leo. Inaweza enda. Those kind of words are disturbing. Yeah? How sure are you that you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are raptured? When he comes down right now. Not there's a way some question. God is not here to judge us. The word of God is for our edification. By the time you hear the word of God, you have to feel encouraged strong and you want to move on. Not fear. Amen. And, and you see the truth is this also. Them that have not been built by the word of God cannot build you. They will always bring fear to you. It's natural. You cannot give what you don't have. You cannot. That's why as you grow up, as we read the book of chapter, number, chapter 5 of Hebrews, you realize the Bible says, babes are people not skilled in the words of righteousness. In other words, babes, these are people who can, eh, as the key says, they can eat anything, even when the cockroach is passing by. <laughs> if you are spiritual baby, you can listen to everybody. Today I can listen to any preacher on the face of the earth. And within some few minutes, I decide whether I will listen to him or, or not. Today, I can. It doesn't matter whether you're raising the dead hmm? or opening the blind eyes. That is the gift of the Spirit. Maturity is different from that. You must come to a point where even when you listen to somebody speaking, the truth is, if you're not careful, if somebody is not grown much, people who have not matured spiritually cannot help you in any way. In fact, they will decrease you. They will pull you down. <laughs> As Pastor Chris says, on Sunday you hear the word of God. And then the whole week you go to listen to movies, 
uh, news and on Sunday you need another revival. Revive me Lord. <laughs> You've been listening to all kinds of things. By the time you come to church you are empty. So you want somebody to do what? To revive you. You are praying to God revive me. The best way to remain strong, vibrant and still moving on is to listen to the right word only. And it's stopping to listen to people who have not grown spiritually. Even preachers. You need somebody else just to decide. And if you must listen to that person, then you have to decide what to do with what he's saying. Because one is a word he can release, can bring you down. And you begin thinking of coming up for the next 10 years. Patient. When you come for a gathering, Say a church meeting who said on fellowship. To whom do you come? To attend to the word or to see the minister? The answer to this question is your gate passed to freedom. Notice God's advice. Quote, my son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. Keep and guard your heart with all diligence, all, all diligence, and above all that you guard. For out of it flow the springs of life. That is the end of that. So the question we are asking is this. When you come to church, or when you go to any fellowship, who are you attending to? To the minister of the gospel or to the word of God? Now you have to be very careful. Sometimes if you come around preachers who don't understand much of what they are saying, when they read the scriptures, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to explain to you. Because what they explain might mess you up. <laughs> now this is very important. If they don't have understanding of what the word says and they are reading a scripture, you must be intelligent enough to get your revelation from God, even as the person is reading the word. Otherwise, some of the things they will say, I know it will mess you up. This, this gives you wisdom on how to be careful who you hear. And then you also choose to listen to them that will always lift your, your spirit up. A person like Ben Isaac, you know when he talks, you want to catch every word he said. I mean every word. When the man was talking, you are like, you want to write, thank God we, have, we, have, we are recording and we have, can have it. A person like Rogers can speak here. The words they speak is just far above you. So you have to just, you, you want to reach where they are. But if I bring another one who is below where we are, like remember the one who came to the AS conference, and everybody wants to go out. The guy began speaking, and everybody has lost interest. In the first few minutes of his talk, Pastor Toa, who you are, Pastor Toa, sympathy and first ten. People are in trouble who come here, and they are not taught in the word of God. So we have to be, that is how we have to be very careful. And there are so many preachers on earth today who can grow you. Sometimes you might be forced to go to YouTube and download their teachings and listen. If where you are, you cannot have people who can teach you. Otherwise, you will not think sound. Sound. And uh, your life is always a product of the knowledge that you have. And if the knowledge of the word of God has not taken over other knowledge in your life, you will not live a sound life. Amen. I think that is all. I have taken how many months to come out of this chapter? Three months I've been talking about the word. And I'm hoping that now what I am explaining can make it very easy to understand as compared to what is in the book. 
I hope it is clear. Now we are going to move to the next chapter where we are talking about fellowship and prayer. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you. We have understood what the word is. The spirit of sound mind. The spirit of love. And the spirit of power. And we thank you because this is happening to us. Even as we are getting in the light of your word, we are becoming sound in our reasoning. Yeah, our eyes are being enlightened. We are accessing more and more. And Lord Jesus, we desire to bear much fruit by putting this word to work. We give you praise. We honor you. Thank you even as we are meeting tonight for Kesha. We are, take, we are going to the next level. In your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, Takesha is there. And we're going to enjoy ourselves this night as we praise God, as we pray and do many other things. May the grace for Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Amen.